Good evening. Welcome to the Homecoming 2020 Virtual Alumni Awards Program. I am Ryan Furness, President of the McKendree University Alumni Association. Thank you for joining us tonight to celebrate the lives and contributions of some of our distinguished alumni. At this time, I would like to introduce President Dan Dobbins, Class of 1981, to bring greetings on behalf of the University. Hello, and welcome to the 2020 Homecoming Alumni Awards presentation. Thank you for joining us to celebrate our 2020 alumni awardees as part of this year's homecoming activities. I hope you've enjoyed the opportunities to engage with fellow alumni and friends this weekend. Since graduating from McKendree, my wife Mickey and I have gathered with friends and classmates during homecoming weekend, and this year, is no exception. We've been pleased to connect with friends, both old and new, during the virtual events. We look forward to welcoming you and your families back to campus in 2021 for a wonderful celebration. I want you to know that your degree increases in value each day. I want to share a few of the reasons you should be proud to call McKendree home. We are a military-friendly school. We have been named a College of Distinction, and more specifically, a 2020-21 Military College of Distinction. McKendree is listed as one of America's 100 best buys and has also been listed among the 2021 U.S. News and World Report Best Regional Universities for the Midwest Region. In addition, McKendree was also listed among the Midwest's Best Value Schools, Best Colleges for Veterans, and a top performer on social mobility for economically disadvantaged students. And McKendree is also one of just three colleges and universities in the U.S. to receive nationwide recognition in 2020 for sustained excellence in assessment over a five-year period. Please enjoy learning about this year's extraordinary award recipients. They are a true reflection of the great work being done at McKendree University and being done by our alumni. Hopefully you all had an enjoyable experience making dinner and as you are finishing up, we would like to begin with our awards presentation. I hope you have been able to participate in some of the virtual activities we have hosted throughout homecoming weekend and that you have enjoyed reconnecting with former classmates, friends, and fellow alums. On behalf of our Alumni Association, we appreciate your support. Tonight, we have several university dignitaries with us. You have already heard from President Dobbins. We also have many members of the Board of Trustees and the Alumni Association Board of Directors participating. We would like to take this opportunity to recognize you all and thank you for the service you provide for McKendree University. We also have a number of former alumni awardees with us tonight and we would like to recognize them as well. The Rising Stars Award was developed to recognize graduates of the last decade who have had significant success in their careers or impact in their communities as a recent graduate. Tonight, we honor two recipients, Allison Paler and Max Avilas. Allison Allie Paler, class of 2012, studied biology during her time at McKendree. As a student, Allie, as she was affectionately called, was involved in an array of activities, including Sigma Sigma Sigma, where she served as president and vice president, Secretary of Sigma Zeta Math and Science Honor Society, Student Ambassadors, Women's Cross Country, New Student Orientation Leader, and a University 101 Peer Mentor. After graduating, she went on to earn her Master's in Public Health from Washington University in 2018. Activities at Washington University in St. Louis included Women in Leadership, Peer Orientation Volunteer, graduate research assistant, and worked at the Prevention Research Center. Allie served as practicum student on the adoption and implementation of evidence to mobilize local health, also known as AIM Local Health, for the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, and served as a disease control specialist for the State of Nevada Division of Public and Behavioral Health. Currently self-employed as a public health consultant, she spends her time advising private businesses on establishing employees and corporate level policies to promote and ensure employee health, prepare for and respond to public health emergencies, and mitigate impacts on business operations. Her work is currently focused on COVID-19 preparedness and responses. I'm honored to be receiving the McKendree Rising Star Award this year. I want to thank the McKendree Alumni Association for this honor, as well as for recognizing my work in basic science research and public health research and practice, as well as my community volunteer work. I currently work in public health practice in Portland, Oregon, and all of my work recently is focused on COVID-19 prevention and mitigation, and so I'm honored to be recognized um, for excellence in this work. 
I also want to thank the Alumni Association and the Office of Alumni Relations for hosting this event and for all the work they do throughout the year. I'm grateful to be a part of the McKendry community and I want to take a moment to acknowledge the people at McKendry who made a huge impact on my career and my life. And those are my professors, especially my science professors, Dr. Van Putty, Dr. Schutzenhofer, and Dr. Turnier. Not only did they teach me valuable knowledge and skills, but they also instilled in me a strong commitment to the values and ethics of doing good science, of doing good research, and of using evidence to drive decision making. When you start to study the scientific disciplines, you become aware very quickly of the vast complexities of our world, and their example always taught me not to be intimidated by complex and challenging problems, and that to be a person of science is to use your knowledge and skills in order to solve those problems to advance humanity and to create a better world for all of us. And it's those values that have driven me throughout my career um, and have inspired me throughout my career. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the other people who work at McKendry, um, especially my friends in the Office of Admissions where I worked as a student, um, and thank them for all the support they gave me during my time there. So again, I want to thank everybody. Um, thank you for what you do uh, for our McKendry community. Next, we have Max Avilas, class of 2017. During his time at McKendry, Max studied international relations. During his time at McKendry, Max was also an intern for the United food and commercial workers on the successful political campaign for Illinois State Representative candidate Katie Stewart, represented McKendry at Model United Nations events, served as peer tutor on campus, was a member of All in Campus Democracy Challenge Committee, Phi Kappa Phi, Phi Eta Sigma, Pi Gamma Mu, and Pi Sigma Alpha Honor Societies. Max also participated in the annual spring break service trip to help needy families in Jamaica. He was also an international relations major and honor student and was a recipient of the prestigious and highly competitive 2017 Thomas R. Pickering Foreign Affairs Fellowship and awarded the 2017 Tanaka Educational Trust Technos International Prize. Since graduation, Max has been sworn in as a United States diplomat in October 2019. He is currently assigned to Mauritania. He graduated with a Master of Arts in International Relations from the University of San Diego in 2019 and completed an internship in Budapest, Hungary during the summer of 2019. Please join me in congratulating our 2020 Rising Star awardees. Now we present the Academy of Excellence Awards. It's an honor to present four outstanding alumni who have made a significant impact in their professions. Their careers have been marked with distinction. While their success can be attributed to many things, the education and experiences at McKendry helped to lay the groundwork that has led them this far. The Academy of Excellence recognizes those McKendry University alumni who through achievement, leadership, and character have made exceptional contributions to the honor and prestige of McKendry University in their career or public service results. These 2020 inductees are no exception. They represent the areas of social science, community service, business, and nursing and health professions. The Academy of Excellence is honored to present as our first awardee, Mr. Calvin Dye, Jr., class of 2003, in the area of social sciences. Calvin majored in sociology during his time at McKendry. In February 2020, he was promoted to the rank of sergeant. He began his career as an Illinois State Trooper in 2004. In 2013, he became the Safety Education Media Liaison Officer. During his time as a liaison, he also became a certified special agent. In May 2019, he was named the Southern Recruitment Coordinator, as well as the Internship Coordinator for Central and Southern Illinois. Dai is a Belleville YMCA board member, Team Illinois Youth Police Camp Coordinator, and Belleville West High School Volunteer Varsity Basketball Coach, and serves on the Cultural Diversity Board at Wolf Branch School. Calvin regularly attends the career fair to recruit students and help with internships for our McKendry students. He also has been a guest lecturer in several courses on campus. In 2020, Calvin was nominated and became a member of the McKendry University Alumni Association Board. Calvin and his wife, Rosalyn, have two children, Elena and Calvin III. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Calvin Dye Jr. into the Academy of Excellence. I'm very honored and privileged to receive such a prestigious award from McKendry University. I would like to thank the voters as well as the McKendry University alumni. I would like to thank the staff and administrators from McKendry University for preparing me for the professional workforce. I would like to thank District 201, Belleville East High School, where I completed my high school education. 
I would like to thank my family, and most importantly, I will always continue to support and advocate for McKendree University. Thanks again. In the area of community service, the Academy of Excellence is honored to present the award to Miss Judy Beasley, class of 1969. While at McKendry, Judy studied education and was also a member of the Alpha Omega sorority. She is a retired educator after 33 years of working in the Cahokia School District. She has also presented to reading teachers throughout the Midwest. Since retirement, Judy has worked to organize the Empty Bowls program for the Collinsville Food Pantry. This past year marked the eighth annual Empty Bowl hosted by the Collinsville Women's Club, which Judy belongs to. She served as co-chair for the Empty Bowl, which raised over 16,000 for the food pantry. She is also active in her church, First United Methodist Church in Collinsville, and recently served on the church's committee as secretary and treasurer. Her work within her church and the Empty Bowls program reflects a value of having received a McKendry education and the importance of giving back. Judy remains strong in her Methodist ties. She is also the perfect example of the importance of receiving an education. She especially feels it's important for young women to be college educated and discuss this with her students while she was a teacher. She is proud to call McKendry her alma mater and remains an active alum. She can often be found at the HEP performance or any of the homecoming festivities. Please join me in welcoming Judy Beasley into the Academy of Excellence. I so pleased to accept this award, even though I don't feel like I have done that much. But I have been involved with the Empty Bowl for the, since it began in Collinsville, we went from $5,000 to over $18,000 last year to give to the food pantry. We also have a, a SOS kitchen, which because of the COVID is not in existence right now, that we feed people on Tuesday and Thursday evenings and it's for anyone. Some people are lonely, some people are hungry. Uh, it's called Spirit of Sharing and different churches and organizations take part in that. And I feel like I live in a community that has really helped the people of Collinsville. Plus, people from other areas come and use our uh, SOS kitchen. And I think when I was thinking about how I got started in work, I think part of it was being a first grade teacher in a poor district and working with children and had to learn to have a lot of patience and caring. And I, through McKendry, when I was a freshman and sophomore, uh, John Curtis was the minister here at the, for the campus and he and his wife, Lodine, would take me to different churches to talk about McKendry. And I didn't realize that I was, people didn't know I did this. And I got to uh, leave, sometimes we'd go to like Salem, Illinois, in different areas and talk. And I got to tell people about how I was grateful to be able to come here to go to school and uh, they should support this school. I think that's where a lot of uh, the work that I've done through my lifetime has began. I've been involved with my church and I have a small family so um, I can give time and patience to other people. So I, I thank everyone for this award, alumni award, for being helped me to feel like I'm a strong part of my community. In the area of business, the Academy of Excellence is honored to present the award to Mr. David Coston, class of 1995. While attending McKendry University, David studied marketing. He came to McKendry as a transfer student and believes it was the decision that changed the trajectory of his life. Upon graduating from McKendry, David went on to earn a master's degree from Washington University in St. Louis. After graduation, David had gone on to have a very successful career in business. He has served as Vice President, Human Resources and Talent Acquisition for the Children's Place, Senior Vice President, Global Human Resources for Guests, Executive Vice President and Human Resources at Armani Exchange for 12 years. David has also served as an HR Generalist for MetLife, Senior Human Resource Generalist at Arthur Anderson, and a Benefits Associate at J. Crew. David currently works at Barnes & Noble Incorporated as the Vice President of HR and Operations and Engagement Lead. 
David and his partner Joe enjoy spending time at their home in the Lake of the Ozarks, where they spend summers boating, water skiing, riding wave runners, and spending time with their children, Cody and Teddy. Please join me in welcoming Mr. David Costin into the Academy of Excellence. Hi, this is David Costin, class of 95, and I'm honored to receive this alumni recognition. To my fellow Bearcats, while this year's homecoming may be different, I'm glad we could still come together to reflect on the rich history of McKendree and celebrate together virtually with faculty, alumni, and students. I truly enjoyed my time at McKendree, and what stands out the most is really the culture and community of the campus. The ability to build relationships with the professors and have a faculty staff that genuinely cared about the students, their development, and helping them to succeed. As an HR leader today, I still use that same philosophy in building relationships and helping individuals develop in their career paths at the organizations I support. And never before has community and culture been so critical in our professional and personal lives as it is today. Once again, thank you for this recognition, and I wish McKendry, its faculty, students, continued success. Thank you. In the area of nursing and health professions, the Academy of Excellence is honored to present the award to Dr. Lisa Green, class of 1988. Dr. Lisa Green grew up in Southern Illinois on her parents' dairy farm. She attended McKendry University where she received her bachelor's in biology. Dr. Green was involved in the biology honors group in addition to Gamma Sigma Sigma sorority. She then completed her Doctor of Optometry degree at UMSL. Dr. Green moved with her family to the Asheville area in 1994 and joined Asheville Vision Associates in 1996. In 2008, she became the owner of the Biltmore Park Town Square location that relocated from Biltmore Square Mall in 2011. The new location has allowed more technology to be added to the practice. Dr. Green is a member of the American Optometric Association, the North Carolina Optometric Society, and the Mountain District Optometric Society. She is also a member of Leadership OD and the Optometric Nutrition Society. Dr. Green has participated in 10 international clinics and many regional vision vans with one site. These clinics serve the poor in each community and provided eyeglasses to them. Dr. Green was honored to be selected for the inaugural panel of the One Site Doctor Advisory Board. During a 2008 clinic in El Salvador, she established contact with an orphanage that cares for abused and neglected girls. Alma's Unitas Hearts United is the nonprofit that Dr. Green founded in order to continue support abroad. Alma's Unitas Hearts United works to provide humanitarian aid to these young girls in the hope that they will be able to break out of the cycle of poverty and abuse. In Ecuador, the projects focus on children in one of the poorest communities of Isla de Trinitario. The school that serves these children lack the basic supplies such as books, paper, and pencils. Dr. Green has one son, Adam. She enjoys hiking in the Asheville area with her dog, Daisy. She also enjoys gardening and exploring the Asheville scene. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Lisa Green into the Academy of Excellence. I am both humbled and honored uh, that I would receive this award and that someone thought um, of me and the work that I'm doing. Uh, McKendree, as a faith-based university, really provided for me the foundation that I needed uh, to one, be successful in optometry school, to become a successful optometrist, and to be able to reach out into other communities and help those that don't have the same opportunities that I grew up with uh, be successful and um, stay out of harm's way, stay out of the, the way of um, the danger from the gangs that are in El Salvador. I appreciate that this education that I received and this work that I've been able to do has inspired my son uh, to go to optometry school as well uh, so that he can continue this work that we are doing together uh, in El Salvador and other developing countries. I appreciate the time and effort that McKendry took to seek me out uh, post-graduation and to learn about the work that I'm doing. I'm thankful to be part of a community of uh, individuals that continue to care uh, after uh, the graduation occurs. And I look forward to returning to campus uh, once COVID uh, has passed and we are able to safely gather uh, so that I can um, meet and the current administration and uh, renew friendships with um, 
with my, my, my classmates. Uh, I hope you all are having a great day and I look forward again to seeing you soon. Congratulations to the new members of the Academy of Excellence. I would like to invite Mr. Chris Mitchell, Class of 1999, Sports Hall of Fame Nominations Committee Chair and 2019 Sports Hall of Fame inductee to come forward to present the Sports Hall of Fame inductees for 2020. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here tonight to welcome four new individuals to the McKendree University Sports Hall of Fame. Many of us, myself included, were privileged to be able to watch these student athletes display outstanding talent both in the classroom and on the field of competition. We are proud to honor them tonight for their outstanding accomplishments. The purpose of the McKendree University Sports Hall of Fame is to recognize those through leadership and character who have made exceptional contributions to the honor and prestige of McKendree University in the field of athletics and who have continued to demonstrate the values imparted through intercollegiate athletics in their daily lives. Our first inductee in the McKendree University Sports Hall of Fame is Miss Evelyn Bean. Coach Bean arrived on the McKendree campus during the summer of 1997. Over the next 18 years, she made a positive impact on not one, but two Bearcat programs. Coach Bean helped bring the McKendree volleyball and softball programs to new heights and success, both athletically and academically. On the volleyball court, Coach Bean guided McKendree to 317 wins during her 15 years on the Bearcats bench and left the program as the all-time leader in wins. Over those 15 years, Coach Bean's teams produced nine 21 seasons, including a 30-10 mark in 1998. McKendry reached the AMC Conference Tournament 13 times in 14 years under her leadership, which includes three trips to the finals. The Bearcats also qualified for NEIA regional play six times under Coach Bean's tutelage. In her days as the Bearcats volleyball coach, Coach Bean coached 22 all-conference and eight all-region performers. In the classroom, she mentored 28 NAIA scholar athletes and 75 academic all-conference honorees. Coach Bean served a dual role as the Bearcats softball coach from 1998 to 2011 and continued in that position until 2015. Like her days with volleyball, Coach Bean finished her softball coaching career as the program's all-time leader in victories with 518. She led the Bearcats to three NAI National Championship appearances, including a fifth place showing in 1999. McKendry captured three AMC regular season championships and a pair of AMCA tournament titles along the way. For her efforts, she was named AMC Coach of the Year three different times and was a two-time NAIA Region Coach of the Year recipient. A total of 59 players earned all-conference under Evelyn's watch. She coached three All-Americans, as well as a trio of AMC Player of the Year winners. Off the field, Coach Bean tutored 264 AMC Academic All-Conference recipients. That list included 50 NAIA Scholar Athletes, 30 NAI academic all region, and Coach Bean led the NAI institution in grade point average. Please join me in welcoming Coach Evelyn Bean into the McKendree University Sports Hall of Fame. Our next inductee this evening is Miss Lanice Clark, class of 2012. One of the top sprinters during her career at McKendree, Lanice Clark made her mark during both the indoor and outdoor seasons for the Bearcats. She was a 15-time NAI All-American and was always considered a top threat in any race she competed in for McKendree. Lanice earned all 15 of her All-America awards for the final three seasons of her career with McKendree. One of the highlights came during her sophomore season when she won the 100-meter dash at the 2007 NAIA Outdoor Track and Field Championships. She captured the title in a close finish, defeating her opponent by just four one-hundredths of a second. The victory served as a springboard for greatness for Lanice. 
In her final two years of competition for McKendree, she wrapped up 11 All-America honors. Lanice rose to the occasion during the 2008 and 2009 NAIA Outdoor Track and Field Championships, which were staged just minutes away from the campus in Edwardsville, Illinois. In those two meets, she earned six All-America awards, finishing in the top three of the finals in five of those races. Her career included three straight top three finishes in the outdoor 100 meter dash and three consecutive third place showings at the indoor 60 meter dash. Now following her career at McKendry, Lanice put together a successful career competing internationally for her native Bahamas. She raced at the Central American and Caribbean Games in both 2011 and 13 and the World Championships in 2013. 15 and 17, as well as the Commonwealth Games in 2014. Lanice also experienced the highlight of representing the Bahamas at the Rio Olympics in 2016. Please join me in welcoming Lanice Clark into the McKendry University Sports Hall of Fame. Good evening. To be chosen as a nominee to be a part of McKendry University Sports Hall of Fame is a personal tribute of high and unmatched quality. This single award places me among a group, and I quote, of persons who have distinguished themselves in athletics, in their professions, or whose dedication and volunteer commitment has significantly enhanced the goals and mission of the University and McKinsey Alumni Association. I can't express how grateful and thankful I am to God for my athletic abilities. This accomplishment is not something that I did alone, and there are many others who deserve to share in this award. I would like to thank my parents, my sister, family, friends, Coach Gary White, Coach John Davis, along with the coaching staff, my teammates, and faculty at McKinsey University for the encouragement and support throughout the years. Last but not least, I would like to thank those that voted for me and to the McKinsey University Alumni Association for offering recognition to athletes like me. I hope that is recognition of my work can serve as an inspiration to others in this field. And I would also like to thank the other nominees who are being inducted as well. Thank you once again. Our next inductee into the McKendry University Sports Hall of Fame is Mr. Scotty Roberts, class of 2009. Scotty Roberts introduced himself to McKendry hockey fans in a big way during his freshman season in 2005-06, setting a school record by scoring 89 points which included 52 goals. After matching that point total as a sophomore, Scotty went on to put the finishing touches on one of the most prolific careers on the ice for the Bearcats. In his rookie season, Scotty averaged more than two points per game as he burst onto the Bearcats scene in a big way. 18 of his 52 goals during the 05-06 season came on the power play, a mark that lasted just one season for McKendry. Scotty pumped in 45 goals and added 44 assists in matching his 89-point effort a year later. But just over half, 23 of his season goal total, came with the man advantage. Scotty's final two seasons also filled the stat line for the Bearcats. He registered 36 goals and 38 assists for 74 points as a junior before finishing up with 29 goals and 31 assists for 60 points in his final season. Now, when the dust settled, Scotty closed his career as McKendry's all-time leading scorer with 162 goals and 150 assists for 312 points. He set a program mark with 62 power play goals in four seasons. Thanks to Scotty's stellar play, the Bearcats also rose into the Mid-American Collegiate Hockey Association Silver Division standings. After helping McKendry to the MACHA Silver Division Tournament Finals during his freshman year, he helped guide the Bearcats to the consecutive tournament titles in each of his final two seasons. The first one, which came in 2007-08, came in dramatic fashion as Scotty tied the game at 5-5 with just over three minutes left in regulation before the Bearcats netted the game-winning goal at 4:46 of overtime. In his four seasons with McKendry, Scotty helped guide the Bearcats to 79 wins and had a winning season in each of those four years. Please join me in welcoming 
Mr. Scotty Roberts into the McKendree University Sports Hall of Fame. I want to start by saying that I am truly honored to be the first hockey player inducted into the McKendree University Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you to the Alumni Committee for selecting me. To my teammates, thank you for giving me memories that I'll never forget. Winning back-to-back -back championships to close out my career, something that'll stick with me for a very long time. Without you guys, I would not be here receiving this award. Thank you very much. To my parents, rest in peace, Mom. Thank you for the f everything you've done for me. The 5 a.m. practices, the trips across the country, to the countless amounts of money that you have spent to allow me to play the game that I love. Thank you for letting me chase my dream. Finally, thank you, McKendry University and the Alumni Committee for selecting me to receive this award. I truly am honored. Thank you. Our next inductee into the Sports Hall of Fame is Mr. A.J. Johnson, class of 2014. After a successful high school career, A.J. came to McKendry as a highly touted recruit for the Bearcats bowling program. Over the next four years, A.J. showed the skill and talent that made him one of the top bowlers at the collegiate level and helped strengthen McKendry's national notoriety. A.J. burst onto the scene as a freshman with a 203.094 season average, which was second on the Bearcats squad. He then led McKendry in average each of his final three years with the program, beginning with a 208.436 mark as a sophomore in 2012-13. The 13-14 season was memorable for A.J. on many fronts. First, he averaged a whopping 222.097 in traditional play for the year. In nine tournaments, A.J. recorded eight top 25 tournament finishes. This included six top five showings and three tournament victories, which he recorded in succession to close the first semester. For his efforts, A.J. was named the National Bowler of the Year by both the National Collegiate Bowling Coaches Association and the International Bowling Media Association. He also became the first Bearcat Bowler to win both awards. Over his McKendry career, A.J. registered a total of 15 top five finishes in tournament play, including five victories. He led the Bearcats to three consecutive bursts at the United States Bowling Congress Intercollegiate Team Championships. A.J. helped McKendry capture second place at the 2013 event. He also earned a total of five All-America awards, including three from the NCBCA. After leaving McKendry, A.J. has continued to add to his bowling accomplishments. At the time of his induction, he was a six-time member of Team USA. After capturing the PBA Midwest Region Player of the Year Award in 2017, A.J. has moved on to become a recognizable face on the PBA Tour. Please join me in welcoming Mr. A.J. Johnson into the McKendry University Sports Hall of Fame. I just want to say how uh, incredibly grateful and uh, humble I am. Uh, I want to say uh, thank you to everyone for this incredible honor. Uh, this is something that I didn't even uh, didn't even think of beforehand. Um, and now that uh, I, ever since I got the phone call, um, it's been it's been pretty uh, pretty humbling on, on my end. Uh, when I signed my commitment to come to McKendry uh, nine years ago. Um, I did so with, with two goals in mind. And the first goal was to graduate with, with a great education from McKendry University. And I checked that box. And I want to say thank you to all the professors and the McKendry staff uh, for helping me accomplish that goal. My second goal um, when signing to come and be an athlete at McKendry, a student athlete at McKendry University, was to be one of the best teammates that I could be and to help bring McKendree University a national championship. I hope that the first part of that goal was met. Um, I know I was not perfect in, uh, in all four years, but the fact that that goal was not, the fact that the second part of that goal was not accomplished was why I so humbly stand here and before all of you and accept this incredible honor of being inducted in the McKendree Hall of Fame I envision standing here with my teammates as national champions and certainly not being up here alone. 
uh, after not achieving what I set out to do in those four years. But what I have realized is that if you work hard, you're a great teammate and you strive to set a good example and you do everything you possibly can do, unexpected, unplanned, great things will eventually happen. Along the way, and along the way, this, is, uh, this has been because of my teammates over the course of the four years uh, as being a Bearcat bowler. And because of them, I was driven uh, to always provide uh, the best of my ability uh, for them in competition and in practice and also off the lanes uh, at school. I always tried to perform the best, the best that I could. Um, and I tried to set the best example that I can to help my team the best way that I could. They drove me, supported me, they pushed me, and they may not have even realized that they did so. Uh, but without all of them, um, I would not be here. And especially without uh, the head coach, Dennis Knepper. In my final year, the O'Keefe's came along, and I would not have achieved all that I did throughout my years here without them. They always gave me a hard time about having to be kicked out of practice uh, when it was time to close, uh, because I would stay long after practice was over to meet with coaches, to work with the coaches, uh, to try to do everything that I possibly could do. Uh, we came close in four years together. We achieved a great deal and many firsts for the Bearcat program, uh, coached by a championship coach. And I say championship coach uh, very heavily because I believe that the head coach that we had at McKendree was by far one of the best in the game. Even though the one main goal I had set eluded me, what, what did happen is what I will take with me forever and be grateful for the opportunity to be part of a championship program, coached by a championship coach. I never set out to accomplish individual awards, but I know by what was achieved just one year after I graduated, when you work hard, great things happen, and you become surrounded by great people. Next year, I know, uh, I know the Hall of Fame will include many of my teammates I had the honor of competing with, and I hope they all know how much I wish they were all here with me today. I want to thank all my teammates, and all of you certainly know who you are. Uh, but just to name a few, JR, Billy, Adam, Drew, Jarvis, Depot, Rich, Double D, Noble, Riley, Ryan, Sean, Mondo, Greg, Jeremy, and the list goes on. Um, you will forever be my brothers. And I want to say thank you to Dennis and Mama Knepper for believing in me and helping me become the best person possible, not only the best bowler, but the best person possible. I am forever grateful to all of them and to Brian and Shannon for your support and belief and help both and help both at the McKendry program as teammates and at the Team USA program as well. I can't say thank you enough. 2017 will never be forgotten. Uh, to Tammy Eggleston, at McKendry University, I want to say thank you and help you for all of your hours of listening to me uh, and going back and forth throughout the four years of, of my time. And to one of my best friends who probably drove me the hardest uh, competing at another school, uh, I wanted to say thank you for setting the bar so high and for continuing, continuing to make me strive to get better and better um, as the years went on. Last but certainly not least, I want to thank my family. Uh, they're the most important piece in all of this because without them, I would not have what I have. I would not have been able to achieve the goals that I accomplish. And they never missed a single event while we were competing uh, at McKendry. They drove to countless tournaments across the country. They flew to tournaments. Uh, and I cannot thank them enough for believing in our program, believing in me, and believing in our coach uh, week in and week out. Uh, I love you all. And I wanna say thank you to more of my family, my sister, uh, my brother-in-law and my niece and nephew, uh, Mason and Juliana. Uh, they came to many tournaments and they, uh, they said, they continued to push me uh, to always get better and uh, to set a great example for um, the next generation. My grandparents who continued to drive to tournaments and always came down and support me uh, no matter where. Uh, thank you very much. I love you all. 
um, and all my extended family, friends, and many others who helped me along the way and supporting me from afar. I can't say thank you enough to all of you. I would not be where I am today without all of you behind me and your support. And I love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, McKendree University, for this incredible nomination and honor uh, to join the Bearcat family uh, as a member of the Sports Hall of Fame. I am truly hum humbled and honored, and I can only hope that uh, this is the start of the next generation uh, for the bowling program at McKendree University. Once again, let's congratulate each of our McKendree University Sports Hall of Fame honorees. Thank you, Chris. I would now like to ask President Dobbins to make our next presentation this evening. The Loyal Service Award is given for long and continuous service to McKendree University. Our alumni serve their alma mater in a number of ways, and that service does not go unnoticed. Those we honor tonight are intimately involved in the life of our institution. They support McKendree by their physical presence at a variety of function and events, by their financial support, and by promoting our university and its programs. This year's honoree is Mrs. Jackie Lehman, class of 1985. Jackie earned a Bachelor of Arts with an individualized major and a minor in psychology. Jackie then attended graduate school and received her MBA from Pepperdine University in California in 1989. She's been an active member of the McKendree University Board of Trustees since 2009. Jackie and her parents, Chuck and Pat Lehman, have had a long-standing relationship with McKendree. Both of her parents have had endowed scholarships named for them, and Jackie established the Janet Lehman Hakala Endowed Scholarship for Music Students. Lehman Athletic Field was named in honor of Jackie by her parents. Jackie has had a wide-ranging career in horse training, riding, and designing courses in the equestrian industry. She is only one of a few course designers who actively competes. Jackie has received Grand Prix ribbons from competitions across the United States, and she has competed internationally in England, Germany, Holland, and Canada. In addition, she has been a United States Equestrian Federation licensed jumper course designer since 2008. Jackie has designed internationally, including venues such as the Winter Equestrian Festival, as well as being one of the only two Americans to be part of the Brazilian Olympic design team at the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. She enjoyed her time at the Olympics, putting her skills to work in designing the course. Jackie stated, the best thing about her Olympic experience is that the world is coming together and I'm happy to be part of it. Today, Jackie continues to be the owner of Victory Lane Farm in Wellington, Florida, where she and her husband, Tim Toole, reside. Please join me in congratulating Jackie Lehman for her loyal service and dedication to McKendry University. I'm Jackie Lehman, a proud member of the McKendry College class of 1985. I'd like to thank McKendry for selecting me for this special award. You may wonder why I've chosen the old gym as my backdrop tonight. It is because that was the look of the mid campus when I attended. There was no football, no performing arts center, no new classrooms. There were only three dorms, Baker, Walton, and Barnett. I lived on the third floor of Barnett all four years. Socially, there were only a handful of sororities and fraternities. That was it. That was McKendry. Things have changed enormously. So I've been thinking about why the university has changed. Uh, of course, we have great leadership, the president, his cabinet, the faculty, the staff, the students, the board of trustees, but it is the alumni that move the university forward the most. It's been truly rewarding for me to be part of the Bearcat family as an alumni and as a trustee. So as I continue, I would encourage you to freely give your time, your talents, and your resources. We can look forward together and we can imagine how the university's future will go on. I'm very honored to accept this award and I thank you very much. 
Again, congratulations, Jackie. We're all very proud of you. The final award of this evening is the Peter Akers Alumni Award. This is the McKendree Alumni Association's most prestigious honor. Each year, it is presented to a distinguished alumna or alumnus who has had remarkable success in his or her profession, whose life reflects the values of McKendry University, and who has demonstrated unparalleled loyalty to the university. This year's recipient has made a habit of outstanding support to the university, and tonight we present our most prestigious award to Reverend Dr. George Pence, class of 1961. George is a 61 graduate. He was born in Milwaukee, and grew up in Chicago. He earned a BA in History and Philosophy at McKendree, an MA in Social Science from the University of Illinois, an MTS from Seabury Western Theological Seminary in Church History and Ethics, and a PhD in Administration of Higher Education and Statistics from St. Louis University. George and his late wife, Ione, are both McKendree alumni and lived in Edwardsville in the 1960s. Ione graduated from McKendree in 1962. As a student, Dr. Pence was involved in a variety of activities. He was a member of Plato and served as president. He also participated in Sigma Zeta, Biology Honor Society, and was a student assistant to Dr. Otha Clark in the history department. Soon after graduating from McKendree, George was ordained a deacon in the Methodist Church. Both George and his wife, Ione, worked for McKendree from 1965 to 1969. George was very instrumental in furthering the development of the admission process at McKendree, and he served as the university's first director of admission. George continued his career in higher education as a university professor and director of admissions at St. Louis University and Emory Riddle. Before finishing his theology degree and becoming an Episcopal priest, George served as an assistant scoutmaster for the local Boy Scouts troop while living in Texas. He served on the City Planning and Zoning Commission and was a member of the local Rotary Club no matter where he lived. After living many years in Illinois, Dr. Pence moved to Sebring, Florida, fulfilling a dream he and his wife Ione shared together. In memory of his wife, the Ione K. Pence Endowed Scholarship was established. He enjoys life making new friends and getting involved in the local parish. He has a dog Coco and a cat Jordan and 22 pineapple plats in his flower garden. Dr. Pence attributes any success in academics and professionally to McKendree and the faculty he had as a student who taught him to think and to question everything going on around him. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Pence, the 2020 Peter Akers Award recipient. I'm honored to be a part of the award program tonight. I entered McKendree in 1958 as a sophomore my first year of college was less than stellar, and I was pleased that Dean Grandy allowed me to come to McKendree. I came from Chicago and lived in Carnegie Hall, the residence hall for men. Weekends were kind of dismal. There were only three or four of us left on campus after everybody went home. And these were the years when McKendree did not have food service on Saturday or Sunday. There were three or four of us left after everybody went home, about the like number of women in Clark Hall at the same time. We had to kind of fend for ourselves. We'd walk uptown for what meals we wanted. If the weather was really inclement, Mom Thornley would sometimes uh, give us some extra food so we could take care of ourselves in the dormitory. There was a place for some of your older Alums may remember called Dave's, little hole in the wall in the middle of downtown Lebanon. Didn't open up until seven o'clock in the evening. It was open from seven to about midnight or one o'clock. Uh, wasn't much of a restaurant, but it did serve a fantastic hamburger. Uh, the girls didn't like to go up there. They thought it was a little grungy. And also the hours were such that they had to be in by 10 and of course, the fellows could, could go up any times they wanted to. Uh, we went up, most of us, or the few of us that were around, especially on the weekend, would go up 10, 11 o'clock and get one of Dave's fancy and famous hamburgers and a Coke for about a dollar or a dollar and a quarter. Good time. It was a kind of an interesting place. In our sophomore year, classes were 12 to 15 students. 
you had to be prepared for class. Class was small enough that the prof would get around to everybody during the class period asking questions and seeing if you had done your preparation that had been required for the class. You had to do it or you're embarrassed. Junior year class size were six, six to eight. And again, you had to be prepared. And many times the class was done uh, in the uh, seminar style. Graduated in 1961. The college then nominated me to the University of Illinois for its graduate scholar program, which allowed me to go to the University of Illinois tuition fee free and get my master's degree in one year. Dean Grandy, the summer before I was going to the U of I, asked me to be the college admissions officer, traveling throughout Southern Illinois and selected cities on the East Coast, interviewing students and making recommendations back to him, trying to enlarge the incoming class for the fall of 62. In December of 62, went to Texas to go to seminary at SMU, and I married Ione Colum, who had graduated in June of 62. In 1964, we returned to Lebanon. I was looking for a job. Dean Grandy heard about it, and he asked me to come in and talk to him along with Ione. We went in, and the result of the conversation was that he asked us to establish the Office of Admissions for the college, and we were thrilled to do so, and we said, you bet, we'd be happy to do it. In 1968, Dean Owen came to me and he said, George, if you plan to stay in higher education, you've got to get your PhD degree. No if, ands, or buts about it. He said, St. Louis University has an uh, excellent program in higher education. He said, I'll take you over, I'll introduce you to the department head, show you around and see uh, how, how you like it and if things will work out. When the boss makes that kind of offer to you, you can't say anything but yes. So we went over, he introduced me to the department head, they gave me uh, an entrance exam, so to speak, and I must have done well enough on it because they offered me admission and I accepted and started the program. They had most of their courses at that time uh, in higher education in late afternoon, early evening. So I took two courses uh, a week at the university and continued to be uh, the director of admissions at McHenry. Wasn't too long into the program, uh, a year and a half or so, they asked me to uh, take the position of associate university registrar at St. Louis U. Um, which had a real nice benefit to it of no more tuition and fees to be paid uh, to the university. And uh, I took it. And meanwhile, at McHenry, I own was promoted from the admissions office to college registrar. I completed my doctorate in November of 71. And in February 72, was offered the position of Dean of Admissions and Records at Emeryville Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. In 1977, I resigned from Embry-Riddle and returned to seminary and completed my theological training and degree in 1979. At age 40, I was ordained a priest in the Episcopal Church. We moved around the country as I accepted positions in Florida and Texas and Wisconsin and Illinois as headmaster and associate rector in a parish uh, chaplain and dean of faculty in an Episcopal residential high school for 350 young men, rector of two churches, and then canon administrator of a small diocese in the Episcopal Church, finally retiring in 2001 and moving back to Edwardsville. After retiring in Edwardsville, I taught in McKendry University's graduate education program as well as served as an interim rector in the Episcopal Church in Alton and as an interim rector in the ELCA Lutheran Church in Godfrey. Through all the years, our fondest memories were the faculty of McKendry and the education that we received. I ended up with three graduate degrees and I own earned her master's degree from the University of Illinois. 
and we never felt unprepared for any of our graduate work or for any of the life experiences that we came across later in life. And I can say the same for many of the McKendry grads that we knew who went on and earned one or more graduate or professional degrees and the excellent careers that they had. I own died last year and I established a scholarship program in her honor so that some student or students who otherwise could not have attended the university could attend. Thank you for honoring me for the Peter Akers Alumni Award. And God bless you and God bless McKendree University. Thank you, President Dobbins. And congratulations to every one of our outstanding alumni who have been honored here tonight. I think it is evident that the 2020 honorees, but also those whom we have honored in previous years, have built upon their McKendree education. They have made and continue to make a difference in this world. Thank all of you for participating, and we look forward to seeing you next year.